Prayer seems to be something that is important to a lot of people. I mean, America has a whole day dedicated to prayer. The tradition of a National Day of Prayer dates to 1775, when the Second Continental Congress set aside a day for Americans to pray to be ever under the care and protection of a kind providence as they began the struggle for independence. In 1952, Congress and President Truman established a National Day of Prayer as a yearly event. And President Reagan designated the first Thursday in May forevermore. And you better mention God. But our devout Catholic commander in chief raised some eyebrows today by not mentioning the word God during his National Day of Prayer proclamation. The first president ever to do so. I mean, look how godly the last president was on the National Day of Prayer. America declared independence. Patriots in all 13 colonies came together in days of fasting and prayer. In the bitter cold of Valley Forge, Washington and his men had no food, no supplies, and very little chance of victory. Reminded me a little bit of 2016. We had very little chance of victory. Except for the people in this room and some others believed we were going to win. I believed we were going to win. Or at the National Prayer Breakfast, which I just realized is on a different day. I mean, don't they say that prayer breakfast is the most important meal of the day of prayer? That wasn't funny, man. In 1963, the American Supreme Court said that state-sponsored prayer in school was unconstitutional. And oh man, have people been freaking out about it ever since. Because ask yourselves... Can it really be true that the First Amendment can permit Nazis and Ku Klux Klansmen to march on public property, advocate the extermination of people of the Jewish faith and the subjugation of blacks, while the same amendment forbids our children from saying a prayer in school? We're proudly announcing historic steps to protect the First Amendment right to pray in public schools. So you have the right to pray, and that's a very important and powerful right. There's nothing more important than that, I would say. And since then, anything bad that has happened is because prayers aren't allowed in schools. But since we've done that, David Barton has done studies and research that uh, in your schools, the crimes used to be gum, tardiness, and talking. Now it is assault, murder. Before every game, at Grady Stadium, a pastor would come down and pray over that football game. I don't remember catastrophic injuries. I don't remember anyone getting carted off that field paralyzed. See, there's something about the power of prayer. There's something about that freedom of religion. There's something about the founding fathers. I mean, if you look at it, yeah, nothing bad did happen before 1963, so they might have a point. Here they are on their way to school on a beautiful spring day. But no matter where they go or what they do, they always try to remember what to do if the atom bomb explodes right then. It's a bomb, duck and cover. Paul and Patty know what to do. And of course, this is the cause of school shootings. Back when we had prayer and the Bible read in our schools, we didn't have school gun shootings. You drove God out of the school house. What do you expect? Do you really expect evil's not going to come through the doors? Is that what we really expect? But can we blame an almighty, righteous God who we told we don't want you in the schoolhouse? Despite the fact that many countries don't have prayer in public schools, and America is the only country who has this problem at this scale. Overall, the U.S. represents about 30% of mass shooters worldwide, with less than 5% of the world's population. It's severely overrepresented in this disturbing category. Prayer is also the solution to school shootings. Courts out of Texas are devastating. The people of Sutherland Springs need our prayers right now. Vice President Pence, in part, Karen and I send prayers to victims and their families in Texas. John Cornyn, truly heartbreaking news in Sutherland Springs. Please say a prayer for First Baptist Congregation, first responders, and community there. This is so sad. You always hear about mass shootings affecting other people's movie openings, but you never think they're going to affect your movie opening. Of course, my thoughts and prayers go out to the victims and their families. Of course, yeah, thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. Prayer is very important if you're a believer. But what do you do when there doesn't seem to be anyone listening? Again, we're very sorry we cyberbullied that girl to death, but we still want a snowmobile. Today, though, please let there be money in our bank account. Amen. 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 Damn it, it didn't work. We're still poor.
Hey folks, it's a scorcher out there, so I just want to start this off by saying, have a glass of water, put some ice in that water, drink drink that water, go for a swim. That's that's all I that's all I got for you there. I just want to let you know that I I feel warm too, and I also want to thank you for watching this video and for liking and subscribing and for all that stuff. I have a link below for the Patreon and our social media and all that stuff, and it really helps. With Patreon, too, I, I'm pretty good at getting myself demonetized. I use a lot of clips. I talk about a lot of controversial things. And uh, so, yeah, it is nice when people recognize that and, and reach out and give us a couple of bucks. And I, I really appre appreciate it. I loved praying. It was possibly my favorite part about being a believer. There was a connection I felt when I would pray. Like I was part of something bigger. Lord, I just like to thank you for that waitress in South Bend. You know who she is. She kept calling your name. It was a good way to get things off my chest, work through problems, or simply pass the time. Ever since I was a kid, you start every day with a prayer, you have prayers at every meal, you pray before bed, and, and any time in between, really, it was a big part of who I was as a believer. Dear tiny infant Jesus. Hey, um, you know, sweetie, Jesus did grow up. You don't always have to call him baby. It's a bit odd and off-putting to pray to a baby. Well, look, I like the Christmas Jesus best, and I'm saying grace. When you say grace, you can say it to grown-up Jesus or teenage Jesus or bearded Jesus or whoever you want. I remember when I was on my way out, when I was deconstructing, somebody asked me why I still considered myself a Christian at this point. And I said, I don't want to give up prayer. There was something about it that just meant a lot to me. I'm talking to the creator of the whole earth. I'm talking to the one who doesn't have to speak. He can just think it into being. I'm talking to a God who can change anything, anywhere, anytime, according to his will. But then I really started to think about how much of a one-way street this had been, and how long I've actually been struggling with this fact. I heard so much about the power of prayer and how prayer changes things. I don't care how dark it looked for you. I don't care what, what they have said to you. I don't care what the verdict is. I don't care what the haters say. Prayer changed things. You would hear testimonies in church and anecdotes about times God answered prayers. Like this weird one from Francis Chan. And I remember one night, you know, we were kind of gathering as a church and Jen wasn't there. So I started walking around the block and just praying, oh God, wherever she is right now, just get her attention. Just get her attention. I believe in you, God. I know you can get her attention. Oh man, if God answered this prayer, he must have shown this person a miracle or something, right? The next morning I get a phone call from that girl <laughs> and she goes, Prince, I, I gotta tell you what happened last night. I'm like, what happened? She goes, I don't know. It was crazy. I was driving and my foot got stuck on the, on the gas pedal and I ended up running into a house and I ended up in their living room and in the hospital, I'm in the hospital right now. Oh, hospitalization and property damage. That can't be the answer to the prayer, right? I seriously prayed last night that God would do whatever it took to get your attention. She's like, well, he did, he did, he got my attention. All I'm thinking about is how do I get it right? How do I, I wanna follow, I wanna follow, I wanna follow. Oh, it is then, hey, God made you go through a living room there? <laughs> All right. Have mercy. I started thinking about how we would praise God when something seemed to be an answer to prayer. And how if he didn't seem to answer that prayer, you were just met with a bunch of excuses. Hey, I have to take my fish to the doctor. Oh, uh, no, the vet is a shrink. Uh, does God answer everything? Because a lot of people say, well, God doesn't hear my prayers. He hasn't answered them. Well, hearing prayers and answering prayers are two different things. Things like, like maybe the answer was just no. Because we have to understand that maybe it's not God's will. I think that the reason God doesn't always answer our prayers is obviously because what we're praying for is not God's will. I truly believe that everything that happens in our life happens with a great purpose. And if God doesn't answer you right away, it's because you're not ready. And if he answers with a no, it's because it's not God's will. Which, for a lot of things, sure. Didn't get a new car that you prayed for? Not God's will. Trust me, I've prayed for Alexis many times, but that's not God's will. Haven't found a wife yet? Not God's will. And I prayed for many years that God would give me a wife. Now today I am married and I have kids, but if God's plan was that I would never get married and never have kids, is God enough for me? But what about the kid that's been praying for the abuse to stop? Dear God, make me a bird so I can fly far, far, far away from here. How is that not God's will? Every event that occurs sends a ripple effect through history 
so that the consequences of any event are simply incalculable and incomprehensible for finite local mm. persons. So the atheist is making a claim here which is just completely unsustainable. He, there's no way for him to show that it's improbable or impossible that God has a morally sufficient reason for allowing this evil to occur. Your entire life is garbage. Isn't God the author of time? Can't he use other events? Can't he guide history another way? Isn't he all-powerful? It's more like a big ball of wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff. Or it's just not God's timing. I've heard this so many times. God says this, I got a plan for you or life. I didn't make you without a purpose. I created you for a purpose and plan, and my plan for you is good, but it has a timetable. It's usually when someone's looking for a job, trying to get pregnant, or, or, or praying for a loved one to find the Lord. We want it now. We think we understand, you know, the timing issues, but God says sometimes, hey, wait, there, I have, I have, I'm not saying no to you, mm -hmm. but I'm saying not now. How do you relate to a God in patience who won't show you the schedule he's working off of? This one's actually pretty smart. You can just keep saying it until the good thing happens, and then you say, see, told you. But first, a deep sip from a very tall glass of, I told you so. Or if it doesn't happen, you mm. just keep saying it or revert to one of the other answers. Oh my God, please, Dad, come on! But some of the other excuses I find a little more sinister. They're the old, uh, it's not God, it's you arguments. You're asking God for a miracle in situations in life, but you want a miracle without pouring out, without doing anything, without stepping out on what God says to do. It's never going to happen. Were you praying with the right emotions? There are many, many promises in the Bible about crying out. God does not listen to, to just complaints. He listens to crying out in emotion to God, saying, God, I really need your help. <laughs> money, please. Oh, no, no, there's no money. Oh, my bad. No problem. <laughs> oh, okay. That's fine. Um, I'll just destroy this office. Oh, hey! <clears throat> <laughs> money, please! Money. When is the last time you could honestly say, I prayed fervently for him? That means you put your whole heart into it. It means you, you probably, maybe it were weeping in their behalf. Are you praying enough? Lewis! 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 Do you know why many of us do not see the answers to the prayers that we're seeking? It's because we quickly give up in prayer. We pray and ask God one or two times for what we want, and then when God doesn't answer our prayers, we give up. Mommy, mommy, mama. He said, I kept on praying. If you, don't, you pray about something one time, you don't care about it. Mommy, mama, mama, mama. What? Hi. Are, are you holding a grudge, maybe? Maybe that's why. Hey, here's another thing that's very important if you want your prayers to be answered. Don't hold a grudge against anybody. Or maybe you aren't righteous enough. And so God says that if there's any of these five things going on, that's an indication that our heart is not pure and God is not obligated to answer our prayers. If you don't think that as Christians, unrighteousness hinders your prayers, you better read it that right there. But doesn't the Bible say that no one is righteous? So if you continue willfully to live in sin and you pray to God, then he might not answer you. But if you see somebody else in the church that it seems like their prayers are being answered, I, I suspect what you'll really find is not that they have a greater gift, but that they have greater righteousness in their life. Saying something like that only makes the person listening look at themselves and how they have sinned. And of course they have sinned. We already know that everyone sins. Mark, just about everything is a sin. You ever sat down and read this thing? Technically, we're not allowed to go to the bathroom. Maybe that person just inherited money, or has connections, or are classically good looking, so they had more opportunities handed to them. They're just so perfect. I mean, even their dog is in better shape than ours. What are they feeding that thing? Other dogs? Or it could simply be that you don't have enough faith. But God says, wait a minute. What happened when you promised me that you will have faith? What happened when you promised to worship me through the good and the bad? Why is it that I only hear from you when you want something? Why is it that you only remember me when something is going bad in your life? Are you praying with doubts? God promises that if we pray boldly in faith, 
that we truly believe he can do it. He can do what we are asking. So I'm not saying that God will always give you what you want if you have enough faith, but I am saying that God will refuse to give you what you want if you're not asking him in faith. This one brings up some personal stuff for me. When my mom was in hospice, someone at our church asked if we could get friends of theirs who have a prayer ministry to come in and pray for her. They came in and had us surround her and hold hands in prayer. At one point, one of them asked me and my brothers to leave because they said one of us didn't have enough faith. I'll be in the hospital bar. Uh, you know, there isn't a hospital bar, mother. This is why people hate hospitals. I remember sitting in the little visitor's room, waiting for them to come out, and feeling guilty because maybe, maybe I didn't have enough faith. And maybe this would be the difference between my mom living or dying. Then I realized that this was just a built-in defense that these charlatans were using as a fail-safe when my mom wasn't healed. They would still be allowed to go around asking for money and speaking in churches about their prayer ministry. And yeah, they did that. Because it wouldn't have mattered if I had no faith or was unrighteous. If anyone had enough righteousness and faith, it was my mom. I realized that if God wanted to punish my mom because I had some doubts, then that was not on me. I was a Christian for another 10 years after that, but I refuse to ever make someone feel guilty for their unanswered prayers. I'm not saying I also didn't make excuses, but it usually was around the, you know, the God has a plan, we don't always know God's plan, we don't know the mind of God, but we just have to trust that he knows what is best for us. The mysterious ways argument. Lord works in mysterious ways. Yep. I know that life can be painful, but you have to trust that he who knows you best knows the best for you. And his reasons may be beyond our understandings. When I was a teenager, my family went on a road trip across Canada. It was so much fun, and I had so many great memories from that trip. At one point, we were at a campground, and me and my brother were walking to the bathroom while he was telling me a story. We went into separate stalls. He kept telling a story. I finished, washed my hands, and left, and he kept telling a story, thinking I was in there. People went in and out, and he kept telling that story. When he came out, he was so mad at me, but I thought it was really funny. But no matter how hilarious it was, I was still kind of the bad guy. It sucks when we think someone is listening to us and then realizing we're all alone. Jesus isn't listening, Hillary Faye. I did everything I could to save Dean, and he still ended up at Mercy House. Okay. Let's take a breath. What could they say and no, do no, no. that I haven't already done? Let's talk. Embarrass me. We have to pray about this. Prayer works, it's been medically proven. I remember many times crying out to God to heal relationships, to help me get enough money to pay bills, to help me be less anxious or give me more confidence, or to heal or protect those I love. Not normally a praying man, but if you're up there, please save me, Superman. And then getting no answer and feeling like there was no one on the other end of that call. There comes a point in a relationship where you can't keep making excuses for the other party anymore. I don't care, I'm done. What? I am done! I don't deserve this! I really do not deserve this! I really thought that I would miss praying, but I really don't. still have times of reflection. I just know now that that is just me there. I have friends and family members who I can talk about stuff with. And now when they talk to me, I try not to walk away. Unless it's really funny. I also have a cat who I can ramble on to about whatever's on my mind. I mean, he doesn't seem to care, but he's there. It'd be really cool if we could just look up and request stuff and then get it. Pray me a hoagie. Make it snappy. I'm starving. A number seven with pimento. All right, all right. Everyone cursed with belief in their creator was finally useful. Yeah, pray fly me home. Hey, come on. But that doesn't seem to be the way it works. Sometimes we just have to work for or fight for things to happen. And sometimes terrible things just happen. And it's not because you said the wrong words or had the wrong attitude. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. It's just because sometimes terrible things just happen. It's not your fault. I know. No, Stewie, Stewie, it's not your fault. Don't do this to me, man. Not you, man. It's not your fault. Screw you. Cut it out, man. It's not your fault. (laughs) Why is it so hard? I'm not quite sure how to end this, so I think I'll just leave you with this thought. We've got to hold on to what we've got. It doesn't make a difference if we make it or not. We've got each other, and that's a lot for love. We'll give it a shot. Whoa, we're halfway there. Whoa, living on a prayer. Or or not. Thanks for making it this far. If you know someone who might like this, send it their way. 
And uh, have a great day. Stay hydrated. Put some ice in your water. Sit near a fan or an air conditioner. Uh, or and do a cannonball. Cannonball! Work, 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 Sky Moon. <laughs>